Friends, I got an important story I'm going to tell you in this graveyard right here. A very influential character in my life. This is Winterville Cemetery in Winterville, North Carolina. It's between Winterville and Greenville. And he is right back here. See that gravestone says Robinson? We're going to go right there. Stay tuned. So friends, many of y'all ask me how I became an Elvis fan. I've mentioned this young man's name before. His name was Troy Robinson. This is Troy's grave right here. He was born the same year as me, 1965. He died in 2014. Troy Robinson is the reason I'm an Elvis fan. He turned me on to Elvis. He had a collection of records at his house in his bedroom. You've heard me tell the story before. And in that collection, he sold me a Aloha from Hawaii cassette tape that changed my life. I took it home and popped it in a cassette player and started listening to Elvis, Aloha from Hawaii, fell in love with it the sound and started reading stories about it and fell in love with the stories as well. This is Troy's grave right here. He had some health issues, died very young as you can see. We were both basically the same age, same classes um, and just a very nice young man. This is his dad, Floyd. I see that he had another it looks like they had a child that died at three years old right here. And I think this was his mama, Chessie. And he's got a brother, two more brothers that I know of. And the jewelry store, his dad owned the jewelry store, Robinson Jewelers in Greenville, North Carolina. And that jewelry store is still going. I think his brother Mike runs it. And he was in the jewelry business, Troy was. But that young man right there is the reason that I am an Elvis fan. And if you want to thank anybody for all these Elvis videos, thank Troy Robinson. If you get a chance to come see Troy, and pay your respects. I mean, in between Greenville and Winterville, North Carolina, and you can see this graveyard, I'll have to show you what the, the entrance is. You see that building over there. There's an entrance on this side and you drive all the way to the back row and then you can see that Troy, the Robinson, you'll see the gravestone, is about halfway down the back fence. You see there's a fence that goes to there, chain link fence. And he's a little over half. Half may be about where that tree is at, but even where the tree is at to the right. So if you get a chance to come to Greenville, if you're stopping through here, come pay your respects to Troy and thank him for making me an Elvis fan. And uh, Troy and I stayed in touch over the years. I didn't. I lost touch with him in the final years of his life, but we did stay in touch different times over years. And he was always just a, a great, a kind soul. Always had real long hair, um, and a lot of jewelry because he was a jewelry dealer. I bought a Mickey Mouse watch from him, a Timex that had Mickey Mouse on it and other stuff. He would bring his car over to the dealership in LaGrange. We'd work on his car and different things like that. And I have Troy to think that he got me interested in this Elvis story and it is never ending, friends. I also have kinfolk in this uh, cemetery. My grandma, my mother's mother, uh, was from this area. Her last name was Four Lines, her maiden name. Her brother, Jack Four Lines is buried down there, and there's some Four Lines over there and up there. Her mom and dad are over there, my Mima, um, up in there. So I have family in here as well. Troy Robinson. I'm gonna show you where we lived. I lived right here in a single wide trailer I would have been in the seventh grade. That's on North Street in Winterville, North Carolina. And Troy lived right over here at the corner of East and Main Street in a house. 
right here. So now I'm going to show you the trailer and we're going to walk through to the house. And you'll see, I'm going to show you the street sign for Ainge and North, show you the trailer and then we'll walk through. Stay tuned. So there you see Ainge and North, and remember I lived on North. So that's Ainge Street right there. The trailer that I lived in is the second one right there. Now they've added on to the front of it. That addition was not right there, but we lived right there. And I would have left that trailer and walked over to Troy's house. And we lived there really only my seventh grade year or part of my seventh grade year. But as I mentioned, that addition was not there. My bedroom was through the front door, which was on this side, through the living room, down the hall, first bedroom on the left. And Troy lived directly over there. So we're going to walk through there and I'll show you what it was like going over and getting that tape and coming back here and listening to it. But before we do that, I'm going to tell you a funny story, something that happened here. I've mentioned in other videos that I had a bicycle shop, and it was right here. This is where I started working on bicycles, and I had a collection of bicycle parts, and I had a banana bike, and I wanted to jump ramps like Evil Knievel. So I set up ramps on the street right here in front of this trailer. We set ramps up. We brought bicycle parts out here, and I planned on running from one side and jumping a ramp to the other side. And... We got the neighborhood kids to pay money for this, and I came and brought my bicycle, and I jumped, and when I did, I landed inside those bicycle parts, and it really, really hurt me quite a bit, and that happened right there in front of that house. So there it is. I would have left right here and gone to Troy's right over there. So let's go. All right, so we're going to walk through this area. Remember, that add-on was not there. The front door was right there. And my bedroom, if you went through that front door was the living room, my bedroom would have been just to the right of this right here. But I would have come out and gone through here and walked the back way. And I remember walking. I do not remember riding a bicycle over there, although I had bicycles and I rode them a lot. I remember walking through here. And the funny thing is, is now keep in mind, I ask people to remember things that happened. This was about 45 years ago, a little bit more than that. And people try to tell me that they know details of things that happened 45 years ago. I was, what, 12 years old, and I have no recollection of Troy inviting me to come to his house. I have no recollection of many other things that happened this year, but I remember this specifically because it changed my life. And I have a handful of snapshots in my brain of school that year. That trailer right there is newer, of course, so that wasn't there. That's original right there. So there's still a lot of original trailers in this trailer park, even from back then. And they were old back then. So wow, they've really made some money on that. But I would have cruised right through here and gone to Troy's house. And I don't know if I had been to Troy's house before. I don't think so. If I had, I don't think I ever went inside. The time that I went inside here, if you've ever heard me tell the story before, when I went in that day, I can remember going all the way to the end of the hallway and the door was on the left-hand side or straight at the end of the hallway. I remember walking in his room and on the right front corner was Elvis albums and they were stacked side by side. There's the house right there. And they were side by side by side by side and there was a lot of them stacked up and I Really, it struck me how neat they were. He had them all neatly placed, and he had other collectibles in his room, but he was really proud of those Elvis records. And we discussed Elvis. He put a record on so we could listen to it. And I ended up taking the Aloha from Hawaii cassette home, as I've mentioned. He sold it to me for a dollar, and I don't think I had a dollar to give him at the time. I think he let me have it on credit. And we went in this house. I remember going in the back door right here. In fact, I don't think this uh, overhang was on this end at the time. And Troy's mom and dad were really nice to me. And he had a brother that had a custom van under that overhang in the back. It seemed like his name was Tommy. And he customized that van himself. Troy's bedroom was that window on the far end of the house right here. So this is where I got introduced to Elvis inside this house inside that window right there in Troy Robinson's bedroom. That window right there. And I got that cassette that day and went home and started listening to it in that little trailer that you saw. And the rest is history, friends. I fell in love with the story and the music, and I make Elvis videos because of it, right here in this little town, Winterville, North Carolina. Troy Robinson's house, yep, right there.
Friends, sometimes you influence people, and sometimes people influence you. This man right here, Troy Robinson, influenced me to become an Elvis fan, and I am still an Elvis fan today, and that happened over 45 years ago. Yep. Thank you so much, Troy. You've given me a lot of joy, my friend, and I hope I gave you joy as well. So I wanted to end this video with this photograph right here. I believe that this is Christmas 1978. Had this custom made by our next door neighbor when we lived in this home right here, Bette Taylor. I came up with the idea for the belt buckles. That's two guitar belt buckles stacked on top of each other. I thought Bette did a fabulous job. And you know what? I was 13 years old and I wanted to be just like Elvis. And I felt just like him right here. And I bet a lot of you did too. So if you want to support this effort, make sure that you subscribe, like, and then join. It helps us to get more videos out there. Yes, it does.